in Shvi of Parshas Vayigash, we find that Yosef is setting up another plan for dealing with the agricultural produce and future of Mitzrayim. In order to understand properly what's happening here, we have to go back to the very first plan, and indeed the moment that Yosef is brought out of the pit in Parshas Miketz to interpret the dream. So let us begin again from Parshas Miketz. Yosef is brought out after we find the failure of the Chartumim, the Chachamim, to interpret the dream of Paro. This is the first time in the Torah that we find a reference to the Chachamim. What, what do we mean by the Chacham? Let us clarify this a little bit further. The Medrash Breshis Rabba raises the following question. Paro chale, Paro is dreaming. So what? The Medrash essentially asks. Doesn't everybody dream? And the Medrash answers that the dreams of king, kings, are different than the dreams of regular people. What, what does this mean? This means that when kings dream, they know that the interpretations that are might be given to their dreams, to in a dream of any other person, for example, the dreams that Rashi quotes based on the Medrash, that the Chartumim Chachamim said to him, seven daughters uh, will you have and seven daughters will die. Um, this couldn't apply to him, perhaps for two reasons. One reason is because he's a king. Moi, says Louis XIV, I am the king. Je suis l'état. I am the king. Right? In other words, kings dream about empires. In any case, had that been the interpretation of the dream, so what, what, is, being, what is he being told in the dream? Other than, than information, there's nothing he can do. His, his hands are tied. So Paro was, was not accepting that dream, despite the fact that they were Chachamim. Along comes Yosef, is brought forth, and he's introduced by the Sar HaMashkim as in a derogatory way. If you see Rashi, Rashi points out the derogation here, Nar Eved Ivri, and we know that the Egyptians were not fond of the Ivrim, and so on and so forth. He's a nobody, but nonetheless, there's nothing else. He did interpret the Sar HaMashkim dream properly, and therefore, maybe he can interpret the dream of Paro. Not only that, but the dream of that he interpreted for the Sarah Mashkim turned out well. So perhaps he can somehow rescue this dream. So he's brought before Paro. Okay, Paro says, I've heard about you that you interpret dreams, and you do well. Okay, so he tells him the dream, and he tells him the dream the second time, the repeat of the dream, the, if you will, the gloss on the first dream. The Yosef, Yosef interprets the dream. And not only does he interpret the dream, he goes further and he suggests something beyond dream interpretation. He suggests something should be done. And that thing that should be done is that a person who is described by Yosef as an Ish Navon, as a person of discernment or understanding, the Chacham and the Chacham should be appointed to deal with this problem. Paro picks up on that right away and says, well, since you've done this so well, interpreted it and suggested so well, I see that there is no person who is Navon the Chacham like you in all of Mitzrayim, and you will be the person chosen. And indeed, that's what happens. What's the difference between Navon and Chacham. Navon is a person who understands. Chacham is a person who not only can diagnose something properly, 
who can understand it properly, but understands on the basis of the correct diagnosis what is to be done. Remember, if you diagnose something incorrectly, then the course of action that you might then institute or you might then advocate will be based on the false understanding and therefore has no chance of success or garbage in, garbage out. Yosef is a Navon and a Chacham. So a Chacham is a person who can deal with an issue. For example, let's take an example from the pandemic, from COVID-19, that once we understand, once scientists understood the nature of what was happening, they said, how can we get the DNA to produce antibodies before the person is actually infected? And they came up with this idea of creating, of, if you will, fooling the DNA to produce the antibodies by creating a non non uh, live vaccine kind of imitation, perfect imitation of the vaccine, such that the antibodies will be there ready to attack the virus as soon as it enters any part of the, any part of the body, and it will be overwhelmed. Brilliant. By understanding the nature of how the virus works, or a virus works, you can create an imaginary virus much safer, much more effective, much more ready to go to battle, much more battle ready. The, 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 the field of battle has not been first conquered by the virus before it has to be pushed back. Yosef understands that, okay? And his, in, his uh, plan is a plan of Chachma. How can we deal with that? And we know what the plan is. So the Chacham is a person who sees the implications of what he has understood. Now, there is something to be said in favor of Paro here, because Chazal say in the fourth parak of uh, Pirkei Ovos, Ezel Chacham Halomeid Mikol Adam. So, not talking about Yosef now, Yosef certainly a Chacham, but Paro is also a Chacham, because he was ready to learn from Yosef, even though he was Nar Eved Ivri. And here, I want to, based on, on something that I, that a conversation or an interchange between myself and Rib David Gross from last week on last week's Parsha and Parshas Miketz, I want to go to another uh, point. And that other point is that there is a question, a test that is that is raised by none other than Rabbi Yochan ben Zakkai about the best way a person should should be. What's the best nida in life that a person? And there's five entrants into this contest, the five great students of Rabbi Yochan ben Zakkai. And there are actually two groups, two sets of answers, and then a strange outlier answer. The two sets of answers are one answer is Lev Tov, a good heart. Another answer is Ayin Tova, a spirit of, of generosity. Okay, they fall, fill into, fall into the same category, the category of a virtue, of that falls into Hilchot Midot or Hilchot Deot, as the Raman called it. It's a virtuous person's character trait. The other two answers don't point to virtues, but point to the way we will learn to act well and might develop virtues as a result of that. And that is, associate yourself with a good environment where people act properly. So there is the chaver tov position, a good friend, or a shachain tov, a good neighbor, things we pay for every day. But then there is the position of Rabbi Shimon. And Rabbi Shimon seems to be not relevant at all. He says, the person who can anticipate the future, the person who sees the future. Well, what is this case doing here? What is this suggestion doing here at all? And I would suggest that Reb Shimon is the kind of the position that is true 
of both positions. Yes, either a lev tov or a chaver tov, either either an ayin tova or a shachain tov. Yes, but in any one of these options, you have to be able to be roa et hanolad. You have to understand every time you do something what the consequences. It's a person to do something out of lev tov. Do you understand what the consequences could be? Sometimes the person acting with lev tov will 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 lead to bad consequences. Sometimes a person who has a chaver tov, it will it could lead to doing things that are not right. Uh, there are many many possibilities, but many many a a a a, a thoughtful deed turns out not to be thoughtful in the particular circumstance. You have to see it. It's, there are no ironclad rule. And that is the idea of Roet and Olad. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example of this. Rabbi, Rabbi um, Eloza ben Arach wins the contest. He's the Lev Tov. So he, has a, he really has a Lev Tov. And yet... The fate of Rabbi Loza ben Arach himself is by not seeing a roe tanolad of taking that lev tov and going, leaving Yavna and going to a place where people were more interested in luxury and the and the and the uh, the the good the good the goodness of Olam Hazet, the Amsit, Maus, right? So r- 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 he 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 loses all his knowledge. He comes back to Yavna after. After a good period of time, after perhaps many of ye- many years, and he's called to the Torah and he has to read the Torah, and instead of reading Hachodesh Hazelochem Rosh Chodashim, he makes a mistake on every one of the first three words. He doesn't read Hachodesh, but he reads Achirish. He doesn't read Hazeh, he reads Haya. He doesn't read Lochem, but tellingly he reads Li Bam. Their heart became became muted. He forgot everything that he learned. This person, the greatest student, right? He shouldn't have gone to Damsit. He wasn't Roe et Hanolad. So Yosef is a Chacham who is Roe et Hanolad, and that's a Chacham. Interestingly enough, the word Chachma, which appears in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this context, in Bereshit, appears again in in with paro, the new paro at the beginning of Shmos. That's the next time the word appears in the verbal form. Paro says, "This people, they could be dangerous, right?" Hava nidchak lo. Let us act wisely, and his wise, wise wisdom led him to enslave the Jews and ultimately to decide to kill all the males to wipe out basically to wipe out the Jewish people in the long run. Nitchakma, right? So he had a plan, right? But he wanted this plan to be exercised by the midwives, right? The Mialdot. And the Mialdot said, Ki chayotena, the Jewish women are chayot. They're, they give birth to the child. We don't know there's a child. They hide the child. They give birth to the child before we show up. The Targum explains, translates, that they they were chayot chakimin. They were wise. They were wise. In other words, they understood what to do, given, given the situation. They saved the children, right? That's the way the Targum is interpreting it. But be that as it may, we come to pa- the end of Parshat Vayigash, and we meet Yosef engaging in negotiation with the people until in the end, Paro controls and owns all the land of Mitzrayim. And the deal is made with the people that they will be sustained by the, by the, uh, the, the, the grain, they, that the agricultural planning is not up to them, it's up to Paro. They will be sustained and provided for but they have to, a percentage, a percentage has to always go to, once again, as, as, as um, Yosef said in the first advice, to make chimesh 
et ha'aretz. Onkelis translates that as to prepare the land, but it could also mean to the land, divide the land into sections. And here it's to divide the grain into sections permanently. This is going to be the way Egypt is. Now, why, why do I emphasize this? Because this is a classic example of Roe Tanolad on top of Roe Tanolad. In other words, he interpreted the dream, and since the dream clearly was from, from heaven, he knew, Yosef knew what to do, what to advise. He understood, but he understands something else. And that is to, to maintain the survival of Egypt. You, can un, you must understand that it could be true that the Nile will not overflow every year, that there can be years of drought. And in those years of drought, we're back to the same problem. What he did was create a permanent solution to the problem, that the people wouldn't be eating, eating everything up and there would be no, no storage for the next year. 10 years from now, 100 years from now, as long as Paro was there. And that is the emphasis at the end of this particular story of Yosef acting with the good advice to the, to the, to, to the Egyptians. He comes with another proposal and another, another strategy. And that strategy will last far beyond the seven years of this span, it will last into the foreseeable future. And for that, that's why the Torah tells us this story once again. Of course, another reason the Torah tells us this story is because the, the Paro who then comes, whether it's the Paro who forgot or the simple Pshat, Melech Chadash, right? A new Paro who didn't want to know Yosef, didn't want to know Yosef, in, 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 even though it's not simply that Yosef had saved from a particular tragedy the land of Egypt, but he had saved the land of Egypt from ever having a tragedy. And nonetheless, he was an ingrate. And that becomes the essence of the kind of the introduction of the movement of Am Yisrael into Galut and the eventual redemption.